So what what type of opportunities has tech created for like you and your family since you've been working in this industry? Honestly, say like more comfortability. And when I say that, like, for instance, my first job working at Clear, like I knew it was great money. It was fun, but I knew that wasn't long term. So that was always something in the back of my mind. Like, hey, this is going to run out eventually. However, with tech, it's like, you know, it's not going anywhere, but you can go extinct if you don't stay sharp. Facts. Facts. Yeah, you, you got to stay sharp in tech. Like if you don't stay sharp. You're toast. Welcome back to another episode of Day of My Tech Life. My name is Simone B. And today I have a very special guest here. This is Dylan Marcellin. He's a POS engineer at Disney and he has a great story and I definitely want y'all to hear it. So thanks for coming out, Dylan. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Super excited to do this. We've been following each other on Twitter for a while now. Mm. You've been hanging out in the in like the SLS space and all that. So it's crazy to see your growth, man. So you know, what made you want to even get into tech and like what was your background growing up? She so was my background of what got me into tech. So like two parent household, always wanted more for myself. And honestly, like I remember when Salesforce actually first came to my college, like business college class. And I didn't know like what I how I was going to enter because I didn't see myself into tech. But um, fast forward years later, I, I seen like it was 2019, 2020. I seen you on the TL. I'm like, what is she talking about? And I just figured, like, let me kind of just go at it, you know. And but to be to answer your question, my original background is actually in psychology. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's random. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what like so how'd you go from like psychology to like, hey, I want to get into tech? Like what what made you want to do that? I think it was it was cybersecurity was actually like my first like okay like after Salesforce it was cybersecurity and then when my my one of my best friends like since the fifth grade he got into he got into cybersecurity and he kind of like showed me like the overlaps between like cybersecurity and psychology and how like you, sometimes you got to get in the mind of a hacker of an attacker like why are they attacking this system what's going on what will be the next moves th things of that nature so on. Um, that's what more or less like got me into it and like the uh, end goal for me right now. An uh, end goal for me is like getting into cloud security. So okay, uh, okay. So, I mean, you're a POS engineer. So, like, can you explain to people what that is okay. and like what you do? Okay. And and you know, what was your first tech job as well? Okay. So, <laughs> so POS engineer is a point of sale engineer. So essentially, my, what my day to day looks like in Disney is more or less. I deploy new systems onto payment terminals. Okay. So if there's any like troubleshooting or bugs within a payment terminal, I have to troubleshoot it, see what's going on, configure their permissions. And sometimes I go on site, whether it's Animal Kingdom or even like Magic Kingdom and install new hardware, make sure everything's running up. Cool. Okay. 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 And then um, you were telling me before how like you started out in help desk, right? Yeah. So how, like, how did that come about? how did you end up getting that uh, role? Okay. So how I got into help desk, um, actually it's from, I would say you were kind of like responsible for that because I remember you on the TL talking about like Yellowtail Tech. Yeah. And I knew I knew somehow if I really wanted to get into the nitty gritty of mm -hmm. tech, I need to make some type of change. I need to make a sacrifice. Yeah. So being a Yellowtail Tech, I developed the skills to like really lock in, learn Linux and really speak the language of technical people instead of like not really knowing how to articulate myself in the tech space. Yeah. Yeah. So so you ended up doing Yellowtail Tech. And, you know, how was that? How was that experience? It was a great experience. Like. I've always been a, like a great college student, like studious and whatnot, mm. but diving into something that's totally new, I'm totally unfamiliar with. I really had to lock in and dedicate 10 to 15 hours a week to really like grasp the concept because yeah. it was kind of hard. It was really kind of hard for me to, to lock in. Yeah. But yeah. Linux is not it's not easy for people like like at first because you, you like you said, you really do have to lock in. Cause it's not like, you know, it's not a multiple choice type of thing. Yeah. Right. Like it's like, it's just you and the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you started locking in with like Yellowtail Tech, learning Linux and, you know, how did that go? That went great. Um, I finished the, finished the program in 2024 and I really had no complaints because I seen what it takes to get into the tech industry. Unfortunately, there's some people, whether on social media, you see like, Hey, I do this, I do that. And they make it really easy, but it's really not. You really have to dedicate and put in the hours to get what you want to get out of it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got to put that time in, even, even for like help desk, you know, I always tell people to get, get their security plus. Yeah. It's like, all right, if this is brand new to you, 
Like, you need to put in at least minimum one hour per day of studying. Yeah. But, like, if you put in, like, one to three hours a day, study for three months, then you could take the Security Plus, And then you also need to do labs and things like that, too. Yeah. So, you know, so you had to really put in a lot of work to get those Linux skills. Just to, just to be able to come across as somewhat decent to know, like, somewhat decent. And, yeah. and my hiring manager... He just gave me a shot. He liked my personality. He's like, I see what you're thinking about. I see how you carry yourself. Like, okay, I'm going to give you a chance. And it wasn't the best job. You know, help desk isn't that glamorous, but I got my reps in. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. So so with that with that help desk job that you were working, like how long were you there for before you ended up making that jump over to Disney? So I was there from April 2024 to December 2024. Okay. So you weren't there like super long, but that was... Over six months, about eight months. Yeah. About eight months you were there, and then you got in with Disney? Yeah. Okay. I started Disney December 30th, 2024. Dang, that's crazy. So, like, you got in a tech, and then you got with Disney. And then now, you know, like, what what was your salary starting out with Help Desk? And then, like, where are you at right now with Disney? You could just say a range if you... Nah, nah, I'm going to keep it a thousand, like, because... Uh, like not everybody, not everybody is fortunate or have like a great support system. But when I was at Help Desk, I was my salary was thir- like if I would have stayed there for a year, it would have been thirty seven thousand mm. dollars. How can you survive off of that? Yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah. That's the some of the Help Desk salaries are like really low, for sure. If I could go back, I would. I would have gotten my Security Plus sooner. Mm-hmm. Um, I got my. Li- oh, you got your Security Plus? Yeah, I got it December sixteenth. So, like, two days before GovTechCon? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got your Security Plus two days before GovTechCon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, I mean, what, like, how, how do you think the Security Plus helped you? So, I haven't necessarily, like, applied, mm-hmm. saying, I haven't really applied myself in that regard, but learning about, learning about the Security Plus, that was probably, like, the most fun I've had actually, like, studying since my first interest was cybersecurity. Mm, okay, that makes sense. So now are you, you want to, I know you said you want to get to like cloud security yeah. engineer, so you want to kind of like tie all that together. And learning Linux um, is really the foundation of cloud anyway. Yeah. So tying that in with Yellowtail Tech and then getting your security plus two, like that can help you get that ball rolling towards that cloud security role. You That's want. literally what I was thinking because I'm. it was either Linux or cloud and I'm like, cloud is the future, you know, and they gave you a great, they gave, they gave us a great baseline of Linux to, take those skills into cloud yeah. but ultimately the like like i said like cloud security but DevSecOps is like yeah that's your goal like that's the in in goal yeah, yeah. that's the in in goal <laughs> definitely definitely so so you got your security plus and then so you did yellowtail tech and you got your your red hat certified since I that no 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 you didn't get it yet no i i want to but i, I don't i don't have it yet i have my aws sysops aws okay. solutions architect oh okay um, my next cert that I'm getting is a Terraform, and I don't know we spoke off camera, yeah. but after Terraform, I'm going to get my Kubernetes. Oh, yeah. So you're going, like, deep on the DevOps yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. okay. I see. I see. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Okay, yeah, nah, yeah, that's going to work out for sure. And then, so, um, so what what type of money are you making now? So you started at Help Desk. Uh-huh. You said you were making 37. Like, where are you at right now? 83.5, so $83,500. Okay, okay. He said that fast. Yeah, you know. <laughs> he said 83.5. <laughs> I know 37. Nah, hell not. Nah. My bad. You all right. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. So, shoot. So, you you more than doubled your salary once you made that jump from help desk. For sure. For mm-hmm. sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, man. So, you know, I typically tell people to go in the help desk first and then, you know, try to get a role that's going to pay anywhere from 45 to 60K, mm-hmm. depending on where you are. And then once you make that jump from help desk, um, you can get into like either like closer to 90K, like how you did, or either six figures mm-hmm. in that next role. So, you know, you're definitely like on that right path because I'm sure your next role is going to be like a cloud engineer type role yeah. or something similar to that, right? So, so tell me, like, what do you do in your Day to day as a POS engineer. Mm. So, um, more or less, when tickets come in through our ServiceNow portal, see what see what needs to be worked on. So, if there's a ticket that says, "Hey, you need to go to Animal Kingdom to, you know, uh, maybe one day I may need to just install hardware." Like, "Hey, I'll, I'll do that. Whatever, 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 whatever it takes to do, to get the job done." And then sometimes I need to, hey, there, like there's bugs within the system. You need to configure the permissions or configure the settings to make sure it runs smoothly, and um, that's really it. Sometimes, it's I don't I don't want to say it's uh it's not too like mentally taxing. Uh, once I've like once I once I got the hang of it, it was it was cool, you know, smooth sailing. 
So what what do you think helped you level up the most in your tech career? Locking in. As simple as simple as that. If you like, I had to study. If like tech didn't doesn't didn't come easy to me, and there's still some times where I do struggle, and I do need to like re, like revisit old products I've done, look at old notes to see like, okay, what did you do here? How can you can you solve this a different way? Like, I've li- I've literally been locked in. I don't really go out like that at all. Yeah, yeah. No, you you gotta lock in. Like if you if you don't lock in, you're just not gonna make progress. Yeah. Right. So I, I like that. I like that. Yeah. And then and then that's the thing about tech too is like you'll you'll never know everything in mm-hmm. tech. So it's okay to like go back and review old stuff and review. Um, you know, old concepts that you just might be rusty on because you don't deal with them every day. Yeah. So, yeah, locking in is, is definitely key. You got to lock in in tech for sure. And I think maybe the reason why I, I don't want to say hard on myself, but because coming from like the background that I come from and like knowing that how hard it was for me to like understand concepts. And there's some people that's like working, like they live, they live, breathe, sleep, all this stuff. And like, I'm not going to take pride in being the smartest genius. However, when it comes to competition or locking in new roles, like yeah, your personality can only take you far, but you have to have the personality to be able to articulate yourself and speak the language of whatever whatever that senior manager is looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, you know, and that that's that's completely fine because you know you it takes personality, it takes your technical skills, and you don't have to be like I always like this. I hate saying it like this, but you don't have to be some big like tech nerd to yeah. like excel in this industry and excel in this career. So what type of advice do you have for people who are trying to get to where you're at in tech? Like, you know, what type of advice can you give them? Because you said it took you like two years to get to where you are now. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you got some good advice to help people, you know, get there faster. Listen to Simone earlier. <laughs> Simple. Like when I first came across her profile, 2020, 2019, like I was still like trying to taste, trying to taste different things. But if the sooner you lock in, the sooner you sacrifice, the sooner you'll get what you want. So besides listening to Simone, if there's other people in your life that are in the tech industry and you want to like get get involved, pick their brain, see how see what they did, try to figure out. But learn from people who are doing better than you. That's a fact. That's a fact for sure. So um, so do you do you do anything with like AI? Have you started like messing with AI yet in your free time? ChatGPT, Gemini, yeah. um, Grok. I, I like to train the different like L- LLMs like mm-hmm. against each other to see like which one does better. Exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not even gonna hold you like I. This is book you you posted on the 12 week year. I basically like had ChatGPT like schedule out my like my next quarter using principles from that book so you could do it for that you could do it for like scheduling your week to week nutrition fitness like i work out mr move your body but um like there's a lot of stuff you could do with ai but as far as like within like um like career wise i haven't really like experimented with ai like okay okay what okay so but you use it like on kind of like a recreational type of like way right do you do you have any idea of how you know maybe ai might impact you know what you're doing with like either pos systems or how how maybe you could use like AI to help you with like cloud security in the future. Have you thought about that yet? I, like I have, yeah. but I haven't really like dove deep into that. Yeah, yeah, into that like realm of thought. So, so how do you think like networking in tech like helps you out, right? You, I know you came to GovTechCon, mm-hmm. and then I know you've done Yellowtail Tech. You know, how do you feel like networking has helped you? Like, have you met other people from Yellowtail Tech in person at any of these conferences? Yeah, of course. I feel it feels like. Uh like a great community just mm-hmm. like you know you have your discord and everybody like it's like i went to high school with some of these people or like i've yeah. known them since i was a like a child i think at the end of the day once you're around people who have like the same aspirations or like they're on the same type of time as you like you kind you guys just mesh like you can't help but mesh you know right right yeah that, that makes sense that makes sense and that's i mean that's really the key to networking right like if you want to genuinely network you mm-hmm. got to be able to try to form like some genuine connections not yeah. just like Hey, where you work at? Can I get a referral? Like, <laughs> yeah, and I hate to cut your wisdom, Simone, but I also want to like highlight the networking aspect of GovTechCon because mm-hmm. every there was no nobody was acting Hollywood. Everybody was trying to like, oh, like follow up with me when you get back, yeah. or it just felt really, really genuine. I and honestly, Simone, I didn't meet anybody who seemed like fake or phony. Everybody yeah. just seemed like they wanted to help out or like, how can we? 
work with each other or anything like things of that nature yeah yeah no i mean GovTech con community is crazy i don't know if you're in the discord either mm -hmm. but like like they're still in the discord like doing meetups mm -hmm. like in local areas too so Fire. yeah yeah so i think like networking definitely is key when you when you do it the right way you meet like genuine people that you genuinely have a connection with so it can help you like grow in your career and then just meet people that's on the like same journey as you too yeah so what what type of opportunities has tech created for like you and your family since you've been working in this industry honestly say like more comfortability and when i say that like for instance my first job working at clear like i knew it was great money it was fun but i knew that wasn't long term so that was always something in the back of my mind like hey this is going to run out eventually however with tech it's like you know it's not going anywhere but you can go extinct if you don't stay sharp facts facts yeah you you gotta stay sharp in tech like if you don't stay sharp you're toast right like um, yeah uh, um, unless you don't mind like not moving up right like we had kind of talked about that too like how sometimes some people stay in help desk for a long time like if you don't mind not moving up then yeah you know you don't really have to learn too much too many new things uh depending on like what type of company you work for but i want to add to your point i Outside of moving up, I think with everything that's going on now with AI, I think it's more or less like about survival. With AI come in, like how you said, like if people don't like try to learn new things, they could potentially be replaced, right? Because I, I do know people that are creating like AI to replace like entry level tech roles, right? Like um, SOC analyst roles, uh, potentially even help desk too, right? Like they're going to try to, you know, replace as much as they can. So yeah, you definitely got to try to, you know, level up as much as you can to survive long-term in tech for sure. I do want to ask you a question, Simone, because mm -hmm. you did like, it was, it was in regards to AI. So like, what would be your advice to, to upcoming professionals who want to use AI more or less like a career um, way instead of just like as a personal assistant recreation, how I do? Because I'm genuinely curious about Yeah, that. as a career way, what, to kind of like map out your career? Um, or? Or not to map out your career, but uh, AI softwares or like gen AI or like things they should study so they could. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would say since you're interested in like cloud, like I, I would probably do a lot of stuff with like Google too, right? Like because Google has a lot of Gen AI mm -hmm. courses for free. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of AI, using AI for your career, I would definitely take advantage of like any type of free courses you can. Mm -hmm. I know you're interested in like um, like DevOps and DevSecOps. NVIDIA also has courses that they have too to help you learn like um, their how how they utilize Linux for their different servers and their uh, switches and routers that they have. Okay. So um, I would definitely use like the free training to to move forward in your career. Okay. Um, but in terms of like, you know, how you can use it on your day to day job, of course, that's going to depend on your company. Right. Yeah. Because like you're not going to be able to just be like, hey, I got I got this AI software I use at home. I'm about to just bring it to work. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you know, so yeah. it's kind of like to the limitations of the company. But I would say, like, learn as much AI as you can right now to upskill outside of work. Mm -hmm. So then that way when they do start implementing those AI tools and technologies, you're like, oh, well, I've been using this for a while. Like I've been, I've been doing these courses. I've got these certificates or certifications. So I'm already like on the up and up. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then I've seen too, that you're interested in um, AWS, right? Yeah. So I think they have an AI cert too. Yeah. It's, yeah. They, it's the machine learning cert or yeah. 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 They got a couple of them, a couple of uh, the AI, AI foundation yep. and then um, the a higher one is machine learning. Yep, exactly. So I, I would take full advantage of those for okay. sure. So that wraps up our episode of Day of My Tech Life. I'm Simone B. And Dylan, where can they find you at? Do you want them to find you on LinkedIn or you want to stay low key? Uh, they can find me on LinkedIn. That's cool. <laughs> they, can, they can find me on LinkedIn. Okay. All right, cool. So y'all can go and uh, follow Dylan on LinkedIn. Uh, but that wraps up this episode of Day of My Tech Life. I'm Simone B. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more episodes. See you on the next one.